In this video we're going to look at how to use Monte Carlo simulation to assess a peak model and its stability with respect to noise. The method used to test the peak model is to simulate a sequence of measurements. That is to say we assume that data are formed from the inelastically scattered background, the photo emission peaks and then superimposed on these two forms of signal that are useful we have random noise that behaves according to Poisson statistics. So assuming that the only variation between two successive measurements would be the noise then we can fit the same peak model to data collected at different times and observe how component peaks change in their fit as a result of simply changing the noise in the data. Monte Carlo simulation is a method where we take the peak model and we simulate the data that corresponds to the peak model by introducing noise that is consistent with pulse counted data and then refitting the model to that data after the noise has been introduced and then variations in the peaks as a result of the noise can be observed. There are two options on the components property page that is on the quantification parameters dialog window that relate to Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo button will perform a full simulation and calculate error bars on the basis of the peak model assuming Poisson statistics. There's another button that says test peak model and this is more basic in the sense that it does not calculate any statistics but what it does do is it provides a sequence of spectra which have been simulated and fitted using the peak model. And to use this you need to select a component and a field within the component that is not a fitting parameter. So we have area, full width half maximum and position. These are all fitting parameters and they have constraints. If you select any of these parameters or the constraints then a different action will occur. So you need to select a component based on the name field or the RSF that are not used as part of the optimization. And when you have made such a selection, then pressing the test peak model button will simulate a sequence of measurements and then fit the resulting data using the peak model we see. To perform the Monte Carlo, having selected the non-fitting parameter, we press the test peak model button and then a dialog window asks whether we want to perform the Monte Carlo based on the data that are displayed in the active tile and the peak model that's displayed in the active tile. And we'll say yes. And this may take a while and after a minute it, it will confirm whether you wish to continue or not but in this case it's going to terminate well within a minute so I'm going to press yes. And the result of this Monte Carlo simulation is a new file that contains a list of VAMAS blocks that represents simulated data and the peak model has been fitted to these simulated data. And I wish to overlay these in the active tile so I will select and overlay at which point we can visually inspect the data and the model and see that for this particular peak model the simulation indicates that we have quite a small range of variation as a function of the noise in the data. For this particular peak model you would expect a stable fit for this isolated peak and you would also expect to find a stable fit for this peak here which is relatively uncorrelated other than with the background to these two peaks here. You've got some overlap here but these are two peaks that represent correlated information and you might expect some kind of uncertainty associated with these. Now it's worth pointing out that these peaks are defined without any parameter constraints whatsoever. So the line shape is an important part of the stability of this model. And this can be compared to what happens if you use a different line shape. So this is an example of three simulated data using the LA line shape. And the relative proportions of these peaks are stable as can be seen by the annotation but if we had used a different line shape such as a GL30 line shape you can now see that there is information correlation with respect to these two peaks here that are related in terms of nitrogen 
and you can see that it does vary and if I take a different perspective of these data by overlaying them as a set of GL line shapes that have been simulated then it's possible to see that the correlated peaks when measured using GL30 line shapes are unstable with respect to noise at least they're not nearly as stable as the LA line shape. 